Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now it is official. We are really, really starting. Thank you very much. So once again, good evening. Welcome to the Nicholas Copernicus Polish-German Research Award Gala, a joint initiative of the Foundation for Polish Science and the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft. We are gathered here today to celebrate distinguished scientific cooperation between Poland and Germany, and of course to recognize and honor four exceptionally talented researchers who have successfully pushed the frontiers of science through their outstanding academic cooperation. My name is Piotr Krasnowolski, and I will have the honor and privilege to be your host this evening. Please let me extend a very warm welcome to our special guests. I cannot see His Excellency. Do we have? Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, sorry, sorry, sir. His Excellency Dr. Arndt Freitag von Loringhoven, Ambassador of the Federal Republic of Germany to Poland. <laughs> Professor Katja Becker, President of the German Research Foundation. <laughs> Professor Zbigniew Wodski, Director of the Polish National Science Center. Dr. Grażyna Żebrowska, Director of the Polish National Agency for Academic Exchange. <laughs> Professor Ewa Szczepańska-Sadowska, Vice President of the Polish Academy of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Ms. Małgorzata Grąbczewska, Deputy Director for Museum Affairs in the Royal Łazienki Museum. Let me welcome representations of the universities the Polish winners are affiliated with. We have among us Professor Elżbieta Rządzińska, Rector of the University of Łódź. <laughs> and Professor Rządzińska is accompanied by a delegation from her university. We also have Professor Paweł Strzelecki, Dean of the Faculty of Mathematics, Informatics. <laughs> and mechanics of the University of Warsaw. May I also welcome the distinguished jury of the Copernicus Award, the representatives of the German Research Foundation and members of the German delegation. <laughs> Last and certainly and absolutely not the least, may I welcome the eminent honorees or winners and their guests, families, friends and colleagues. Let me also extend a very warm welcome to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, gathered here in the Palace on the Lake, and those watching us live online. And could I perhaps ask now Professor Zilic, President of the Foundation for Polish Science, for his introduction to today's gala. <laughs> Professor. I hope it's working. Yes. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, it is my great pleasure. It's not working. Oh, now it's working. Sorry. So I will not repeat it. But a good afternoon. It is my great pleasure uh, to welcome all the guests on behalf of the Foundation for Polish Science. It is a pleasure to have you all here. And uh, actually, this is my uh, second time when we are here in this very building, uh, Palace uh, in Avodzie. And uh, some people are saying this is a beautiful, uh, the most beautiful place in Warsaw. And really, it, it is. Uh, we are gathering here uh, for the, to actually uh, distinguish the, the people who will have, will have the award, uh, Polish-German award, Copernicus Award. And uh, the name of the Copernicus was not, not put accidentally, uh, because uh, this means 
also for us, and I hope also for German, uh, a collaboration. And uh, I, I, when I was uh, um, learning about uh, Copernicus, uh, he spoke uh, with uh, her mother German, but his, with uh, his father uh, Polish. But both families come from Silesia, and in Silesia you have a place which is hard to distinguish uh, uh, the roots. But anyway, uh, we choose together with uh, DFGs this name because this gives us uh, uh, a sign that what we would like to have in this award, the, the, the fruitful collaboration. And uh, actually, the, this is the idea which was created between DFG and, uh, and, uh, and FNP to create this uh, award. This was 2005 when we signed the document, but 2006 was the first uh, award cer ceremony actually in Berlin. And this was a great uh, also pleasure for me because probably this was the first award where I was attending as a president of, of the uh, foundation. So I remember this very well. I was a little bit nervous and uh, now I'm a little bit more relaxed after 70 years. But anyway, the outstanding achievement uh, uh, of the research cooperation is something which we are looking for. And uh, because of the COVID, we were not able to, uh, to have the ceremony two years ago. So to, today, we have uh, um, a, a pleasure to give this uh, uh, diplomas also for those who won the, um, uh, the award in 2020. And this is uh, Stefan Jambowski from University of Warsaw and uh, Sebastian Faust uh, from uh, uh, Technical University of Darmstadt. So uh, we are really pleased to have uh, uh, both uh, our dees uh, uh, here uh, with us. They are working on the film of the field of cryptography. And this is something which is extremely uh, important. They are using mathematical techniques uh, to the computer science and, uh, and uh, also uh, the, the, the outstanding received working together uh, is, uh, is also, uh, uh, they, they try to understand a defense methods against the side channel attacks. And such uh, attacks are the most threatened situation for the, uh, uh, for, to, 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 to pass the information uh, through the computer. So there are specialists in this, and we are really pleased to have you uh, uh, here. Uh, and uh, what is important is that they probably, they will tell us a little bit more in a few minutes, but uh, they probably worked together uh, more than 10 years ago, but all these details I will just leave to you. Uh, what is also important for, for foundation is that uh, uh, young researchers are involved also in this, uh, in this work. So this is something which we as a foundation really looks, uh, love to, to see. And the, and the second pair of the awardees are the awardees uh, Kristina Radziszewska uh, from University of Łódź and, uh, and also uh, Sasha Feuchter, uh, I don't know if I pr uh, pronounce this well, but, but uh, I, I think the I think, uh, name Radziszewska went, went smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, uh, and this is uh, the jury, which is appointed by DFG and, uh, and, uh, and FNP. They choose uh, two researchers for the fair reaching cooperation in the field of Holocaust studies. And, uh, and, uh, and, and the jury also uh, <clears throat> show, um, pointed out uh, the very important uh, uh, um, uh, additions what they made, uh, uh, I think five editions of the so-called Ghetto Chronics and also Encyclopedia from Ghetto, uh, from, the, uh, from the Wuch ge uh, Ghetto from Wuch. What, this is the second biggest ghetto which we have, the, the first one I would say it's hard to say first one, but anyway, the other one, big one, is was uh, was in Warsaw. And what was uh, extremely important in this work is uh, this material which they prepare. Now, now we can start to 
answering very important questions which uh, still were not uh, solved. And this is uh, why, why uh, this pair of scientists were, were distinguished by, by the jury. Uh, we are talking about the Jew, uh, Jewish culture, uh, but you need to remember that most of them, I'm not a specialist in this, but I would, you can pr correct me, but most of them were, uh, have a national, Polish nationality, so we can say that this is also Polish culture. And uh, <clears throat> what, uh, what was uh, the, the collaboration, uh, I think, was, uh, was initiated in 1996. I actually learned this from the internet, but maybe I'm wrong, when, uh, when you were on the Tempus program here. Is it right? Okay, so it's very nice. Uh, and, uh, and what is also important uh, for us is that, uh, that both university universities uh, in Germany and in, in Poland create a special units uh, uh, which are working on the Holocaust. Uh, uh, this terrible things what happened uh, uh, so many years ago. And uh, another thing which I am, it's touchy also for me is that you pass this information about uh, Jewish history also to, to, to general public, which is also important that we scientists should share our results with with public. And this has happened in Poland, but also in Germany. So I am congratulating both pairs of the awardees, and uh, thank you very much. <coughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that Professor Zilic will be returning to that microphone today, and that more than once, I'm quite convinced. May I now kindly ask Professor Becker for the other half of the introduction to today's celebration. Thank you. very much. Dear, dear Professor uh, Zilic, dear awardees, dear representatives from Polish ministries, His Excellency Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, dear friends and colleagues. It is such a great pleasure, really, to welcome all of you on behalf of the DFG, the German Research Foundation, to this Copernicus Award ceremony. This year we have the great honor of being invited to Warsaw and to celebrate this ceremony in presence, again, honoring two outstanding couples of researchers. I wish to express my most sincere gratitude to Professor Zilic and the FNP for inviting us here to this absolutely, I mean, unbelievable place. Um, conferring the award today with Professor Zilic is exciting for many reasons. In particular, our joint ceremony is highlighting the constructive force of international cooperation and the engaging spirit of friendship between nations. Our most prestigious German-Polish cooperation is more than ever before a beacon of stability and progress in difficult times. In Europe, we are learning in a bitter way these days that trust and a spirit of collaboration between nations cannot be taken for granted. The Russian war on Ukraine is a humanitarian catastrophe. It is also putting into question core values of research, like freedom and autonomy and exchange, freedom to think, freedom to cooperate. 
That is why even today, as we are celebrating, we cannot leave out this topic. Science is a part of society. And as such, the war is forcing us all to rethink and consequently forced us, also the DFG, to suspend all funding for our institutional cooperation with Russia. After all, this war poses a threat to the values of a free Europe as well as to those of free science. That is why we outspokenly condemn the war and why we are working on offering Ukrainian academics in German and European exile adequate perspectives together with our partners in Poland and internationally while working towards the future re-establishment of research structures in Ukraine in the long term. Having said that, I wish to highlight what good neighbors do, what the dynamics of research demand and what enables civilizational progress. In fact, the tragedy of war shows us again the importance of contributing to a better understanding of nations and to a smooth development of their relations. Here, our German-Polish cooperation is becoming, if I may say so, a role model to the question of how relations of trust and friendship can be built. Our cooperation unfolds successfully against the challenging backdrop of our joint history and is proving that research and research cooperation can indeed contribute to a peaceful development of neighboring countries. Obviously, the German-Polish success story has various aspects. An essential condition is political support. That is why we are very proud today that we are joined by representatives of the Polish government and the German ambassador. Thank you all for your ongoing support and dedication. The strong bonds between our research systems are underlined by the fact that we are able to welcome representatives of diverse Polish partner organizations, such as the National Science Center and the Polish Academy of Sciences, as well as other German institutions, such as the German Academic Exchange Service. Political support and strong institutional partners are key ingredients for the success story that we are about to continue today. In 2020, we already awarded the prize to Professor Jimbowski and to Professor Faust in a virtual ceremony. Now is the time to deliver the prize in person. The research conducted by these two awardees has already gained recognition in numerous ways, the most visible example being the International Association for Cryptologic Research Best Paper Award. Their research into the challenges of cybersecurity clearly has the brightest future prospects, especially when we consider how, over the course of the pandemic, our living environments and workspaces have become digitalized more quickly than could ever have been expected. And I can tell you this was also true for the DFG. At the same time, their work embraces traditional academic virtues, such as theory building by contributing to a theoretical understanding of encryption. As such, both awardees represent what the Copernicus Award stands for in the best possible way. A curiosity-driven research approach that changes the way we understand things and helps build a better world for both our societies, for Europe and beyond. The same is especially true for this year's awardees and their 
research. This collaborative work of Professor, Professor uh, Racic Nevska and Professor Feuchert is setting new standards in the field of Holocaust studies. You already addressed that. Their research into literary testimonies from the Jewish ghetto in Wuch, the second largest in Poland under the Nazi occupation, has made a significant contribution to the reconstruction of day-to-day -day life and Jewish culture in the ghetto. The investigations led by the two literary scholars is of fundamental importance for research into Jewish life in the ghetto. Furthermore, their findings form an essential basis for exploring research questions that go far beyond literary studies. Most astonishing, really, is the translation of the main joint publication into no less than four languages, German, Polish, English, and Yiddish. The outstanding academic significance of their research is complemented by their strong public relations work, which has a far-reaching impact on society at large. Dear Professor Jimowski, Professor Faust, Professor Ratichewska, and Professor Feuchert, may your research continue to provide us with new knowledge and deeper insight into matters that have become well known to most of us, but that we are still far from understanding, be they digital entities or our joint past. In both cases, we still have to learn so much more, and we are looking forward to learning from you. May the award be both a reward and a source of inspiration for the future, and particularly for the future of Polish-German cooperation. Congratulations, and thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. Thank you very much. We will certainly have the pleasure of having Professor Becker with us again, more than once. But may I now use this opportunity and invite the German ambassador to the Republic of Poland, Dr. Arndt Freitag von Loringhoven. Could we ask your excellency for an address? Dear Professor Zilic, uh, dear Professor uh, Becker, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and most of all, dear laureates. I am very, very pleased to welcome you all most warmly today on the special occasions as winners of the Nikolaus Copernicus Polish German Research Award for outstanding achievements in German Polish cooperation, Professor Radziszewska, Radziszewska I'm sorry, Professor Feuchert, Professor Jimbowski, and Professor. Faust. Uh, it is truly, in my opinion as well, the most beautiful building in Warsaw, and actually there are quite a few of them. Um, and uh, I remember one time I was here when Chancellor Merkel um, had a farewell uh, visit and um, was invited to lunch by Prime Minister Morawiecki. So it's a real honor to be uh, in this room today. Thank you so much for that. I am uh, very pleased uh, that you are here, uh, Professor Becker, President of the German Research Foundation, the DFG, for the first time in this capacity in, uh, in Poland. Um, it is great to have you here, and it uh, sends a very strong signal of support for German-Polish scientific relations, but German-Polish relations um, at large, I would, I would say. So as you said, we are honoring today two outstanding um, research couples, uh, but also, as we like to say in diplomacy, uh, two true uh, bridge-building couples between Poland and uh, Germany in the fields, as you mentioned, of Holocaust studies and 
theoretical cryptography and um, IT security. Congratulations also for me from the bottom of my heart. You are living examples of uh, the excellent collaboration between Poland and um, Germany. And as far as I know, your collaboration started um, quite naturally. You didn't really need uh, any official support of governments or financial incentives, although uh, that never hurts, of course. You did it because uh, it felt right, and so it worked out um, extremely well, and um, I have always believed that uh, this type of bottom-up uh, relationship uh, tends to form the strongest uh, 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 natural uh, bonds, bonds that uh, you can build on, but also we can build on between our, our countries. Um, as I have the floor, I would uh, like to briefly mention a couple of um, other examples of uh, German-Polish research uh, cooperation and initiatives, uh, most of them fairly, uh, fairly recent and um, promising and, um, and vibrating. One is uh, the Dioscuri uh, program um, of the Polish National Science Center and the German Max Planck Society. I was myself uh, a student, a PhD student um, with the Max Planck Society in the field of virology 40 years ago before I became a, a diplomat, so I'm really happy to see this particular program flourishing here in Poland. Uh, and um, it was a pleasure to see that uh, recently three new Dioscuri centers of scientific excellence were um, announced in Krakow, uh, and then I believe we have eight. We will have eight, uh, and there are two more uh, to come, I hope. The second example I would like to uh, quote, and that's maybe uh, closer to your heart, is uh, CASUS. Um, it's the Center for Advanced Systems Understanding um, in Görlitz at the uh, German Polish border, uh, which entertains close links with the University of Wrocław and it's also a fairly young institute and a fantastic research center for our digital, our common digital future. And then uh, uh, an initiative that was um, co-developed uh, by um, our embassy, which is a networking platform of Polish alumni uh, collected with Germany. Uh, we launched it last year and um, on the internet service LinkedIn, and we want to use it to facilitate the exchange for Polish scientists, um, uh, not only within the given organizations, but also between the uh, 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 different organizations. And the fourth one I would like to mention is uh, German-Polish <coughs> Um, scientific um, uh, uh, meetings, or polsko niemieckie spotkania naukowe, Deutsch-Polnische Wissenschaftliche Begegnungen. Uh, this started already 10 years ago as an initiative of Polish alumni of the Alexander von Humboldt Association. And tomorrow, um, finally, after um, overcoming the pandemic, uh, we will have the first uh, big encounter um, here with the German social scientist Professor Rosa from the Friedrich Schiller University Jena. He will deliver a lecture on how social theory can help solve the current social, socio-cultural crisis and uh, you are all welcome to attend uh, at 3 p.m. at the Szkoła Główna Handlowa. So, um, I'm happy to note that um, a lot uh, of progress has been uh, there between Poland and Germany in the scientific uh, uh, field, and I'm sure that uh, the uh, collaboration we are honoring here today and the prize itself will lead to even more um, excellent research in the, in the future. Um, you mentioned the, the war in, in, in Ukraine, and I, I, I cannot leave before uh, thanking you to, uh, for that. Um, it is, uh, uh, when one lives in Warsaw or, or in Poland, it is just omnipresent, uh, also very present in Germany, uh, but uh, here you really see it and you feel it um, everywhere, and um, uh, every German visitor who comes here 
first of all pays respect to the um, uh, incredible support that Polish society um, gives to uh, refugees. Uh, so this is uh, very, very much um, noticed uh, and, and honored by, by our society in Germany and our politicians. Um, and I think the most important thing we need to do politically is to stand together, uh, to show solidarity and resilience in, in not between Poland and Germany, but in the West, within Europe and in, and in NATO, uh, and not to, be, not to be divided. And I would like to close by, by saying that the network of uh, academic cooperation and, and civil society co cooperation that has grown in, in, in Poland, um, uh, between Poland and Germany in the past 30 years, uh, it, it really creates such a very, very strong uh, bond, irrespective of, uh, of, of politics, uh, and it is uh, one of the kind of foundations, I, I, I think, uh, for, for this solidarity and togetherness um, of Europe. Uh, it's bilateral, but of course it's also the core for a wider European um, uh, network. So again, congratulations uh, to all of you, and uh, I wish you all the best, uh, more success uh, in the future, and thank you so much for inviting me and for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Excellency. Thank you for those kind words about our compatriots helping the Ukrainians, and thank you for listing all those examples of German-Polish cooperation. I believe that the Excellency's address finishes the introduction, and we may now thus pass to the ceremony proper. May I therefore now invite the presidents of the German Research Foundation and the Foundation for Polish Science back to the stage. Professor Katja Becker and Professor Maciej Żelic. And of course, with them, the recipients of the Copernicus Award for 2022. They are Professor Krystyna Radziszewska, the University of Łódź. <laughs> and Professor Sasha Foyshet, University of Gießen. Can I ask you to stand here and take a family photo, all the four of you? Perhaps closer to me, yes? Fantastic, we have a photo opportunity for all our photographers. And I believe that a big round of applause is due. Thank you very much, Professor Becker, and thank you very much, Professor Zelic. I believe that there is probably a kind of ledge to leave these, because I will be asking you for an address. You worked hard together, so could you please share now two microphones that we have for you, and just share with us some words about your research. Thank you. If you need a clicker, this is the clicker for the slides. already there. Okay. 
Right. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to speak to you tonight and outline some aspects of our joint projects. The subject of them is not a joyful one. It is rather sad and tragic. But in the end, we do hope that our scholarly work might help, besides other scientific goals, that the names, the faces, and the fate of the victims of the Wuj Lisbonstadt ghetto, to whom all our efforts are dedicated, will at least not be forgotten. Uh, now about our project and cooperation. In the beginning was Lodz, Wuj, a multicultural city with a very short but fascinating history. In the uh, first half of 19th century, on all, almost empty field, arrivals from German lands, Jews from Tsarist Empire and Kingdom of Poland, as well Poles as uh, living in the vicinity, uh, created a metropolis from the ground. They depended on each other, worked together, uh, developed the textile industry, industry, sorry, and uh, built together schools, churches, synagogues, theaters, and published newspapers. But then World War II came and put an end of the symbiosis. Poles are harassed, driving out of the city, and the nearly 200,000 Jews uh, imprisoned in the ghetto on an area not much long, uh, larger than four square kilometers. And this is where the story of our cooperation and our project begins. But why the University of Lodz and the University of Gießen? The partnership between the two universities has existed since 1978. That is for 44 years now. Uh, it is the second longest partnership between a Polish and the German university. During one of my stays uh, in Gießen, in the framework of the partnership, it must have been in the early 2000s, I met Professor Sasha Feuchert, who suggested uh, that we edit and publish the Chronicle of the Lodge Ghetto together. This chronicle was uh, compiled in the ghetto on a daily basis for 44 uh, years by Polish and German Jews. This text is really unique in the Holocaust literature. And this is uh, uh, the authentic chronicle page in German. Teams were set up in Lodz und Gießen to translate those parts of the text written in Polish into German and the German parts into Polish. The text uh, then was annotated with the help of archival material from all over the world and research literature. The research, the translation and the printing costs were covered by the German Research Foundation, the DFG. Five volumes with over 3,000 pages were published in German by Wallstein Publishing House in uh, 2007 and in Polish by Lodz University Press in 2009. However, Many more unique documents and testimonies from the ghetto were kept in the Wuch uh, State Archive and others, which we found very interesting for our scientific cooperation and which would help to enlighten the history of the ghetto. For example, the journalists and scholars who had already written the text for the Chronicle decided in 1944 for another breathtaking project. They compiled an encyclopedia 
Dilemmas of this most unlikely lexicon concern important people, institutions, phenomena of everyday life, illnesses, and above all, the ghetto language. Because many terms got new meanings in the ghetto, new words had to be found for this daily life in hell. The authors wanted to present all this to future readers, to us, um, at first hand, and in a very strict, controlled form now. The lemmas of this encyclopedia were written in Polish, German, and Yiddish. The annotated encyclopedia was published in both Poland and Germany. The latter also contained all Yiddish entries. Again, it was the DFG who made all this possible. Here I can show you some examples of the original entry card. Um, the first one deals, maybe astonishingly, with, um, uh, call it Auszeichnung, with awards in the ghetto. There was an award system in the ghetto. The uh, second one is about one of the most important leaders uh, in the Jewish ghetto administration, Henrik Neftalin. And the last one, no, this is, a, uh, this is the, uh, about the Triumvirat. Uh, this is um, an institution within the ghetto. And the last one is dedicated to, this is the German expression, to the Babka, Jewish-German expression. This is a special Jewish cake that had tot totally different ingredients in the ghetto uh, compared with the, uh, with the life before, such as potato peels. But ladies and gentlemen, that's the past. We also want to look with you into the future tonight, where we will continue uh, to scholarly utilize the treasures from the Lodge State Archives and others. For there is again an extraordinary collection that is unique in the world and still quite unknown. 22,000 postcards that had not been sent from the Wuch Ghetto because of censorship. The recipients lived mostly in the German Reich, but not only. These cards were mainly written by the so-called Western Jews who had been deported to the Lodge Ghetto from German cities, Bohemia and Luxembourg in the autumn of 1941. As an example, I can quickly show you postcards written by Alice de Bouton. And this woman was the only female contributor to the already mentioned chronicle of the Witch Ghetto. Her cards, as well as the other thousands of cards, are messages in a bottle that never reached their addressees. And we want them at least to be published so that they are known to the world today. It is but a small contribution to deliver what they had to tell about their fate after all these years. And of course, we want to explore whether descendants of the original addressees are still around so that we could deliver these messages right out of hell. A scholarly annotated edition of these 22,000 postcards, or parts of them, and their telling narratives will be a massive project where we probably, again, need the help of our research foundations. Mm -hmm. Diaries, poems, stories, essays, and reports were written, uh, were written in the ghetto. We already published essays and reports by Oskar Zinger, a journalist and writer from Prague in Polish and in German. When we mentioned this publication tonight, which was our first joint publication, we also want to commemorate and sincerely thank our late colleagues to whom we owe so much. Julian Baranowski from the State Archives in Łódź, Jörg Rücke and Alvin, Erwin Leibfried from the University of Gießen, who are no longer with us. All three died for far too early. 
We think of them with great gratitude and everlasting friendship. Uh, we would uh, also like to thank our dear colleagues, Eva Wiatr, Adam Sitarek, and Jacek Walicki from the Center for Jewish Research, and all colleagues from the Institute for German Philology at the University of Lodz for their cooperation. Our sincere thanks also go to the current and former employees of the Research Unit for Holocaust Literature at the University of Gießen. Above all, Andrea Löw, Markus Roth, Charlotte Kitzinger, and Annika Binch. To the former and current directors of the State Archives and Lodge. Last but not least, we would like to thank directors, presidents, and deans at our two universities and the partnership officers from Lodge and Gießen who all supported us in the best possible ways. And a very special thank you uh, goes to Cora Dietl and Joanna Jabkowska. And if you allow, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I all, uh, also want to thank you, uh, my wife, Nicola, and my little daughter, Lily, three years old, who sometimes pay a high price when they have to stay at home without me or see me only working at my desk. I love you. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> uh, so I want to also say thank you for my family and friends who so much supported me in so many different ways. But our special thanks go to the two foundations, the Foundation of Polish, Sci Polish Science and the German Research Foundation for this fantastic award. And also to the jury, which so generously evaluated our work. We can assure you that we will continue to work in this field together because we think it is so important that this dark period of our joint history is also explored from Polish and German scholars together. And of course, also in close cooperation with Jewish institutions worldwide. So thank you so much, Dziękuję bardzo, uh, and of course, a heartfelt congratulations to uh, the both OVDs from 2020. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. The flowers and your diploma. Kwiaty i dyplom jeszcze. Słucham? Mogą zostać. Moja woda. Proszę wziąć już. Thank you very much, lady and gentlemen. Thank you very much. We have just presented the prizes and listened to the first speech, the first show of the prize winning uh, project. May I now ask back our two distinguished professors, because we have just presented prizes. Yes, they were awarded in the current ninth edition of the Copernicus Award. But let's now step two years back in time to 2020. Those awards were announced for the eighth time, but they were never presented due to the outbreak of COVID-19. And then, therefore, may I kindly ask now Professor Zilic and Professor Becker to return to the stage and present the diplomas for the eighth edition. And joining the two presidents on the stage are the recipients of the Copernicus Award 2020. Professor Sebastian Faust from the Technical University in Darmstadt. and Professor Stefan Jimbowski from the University of Warsaw. Can I ask you to line up here in the center so that the 
photographers have a perfect photo opportunity. Thank you very much, Professor Becker. Thank you very much. Oh, still, there are, there are still some photographers who are working. They are hard at work. Right, thank you very much, Professor Becker. Thank you very much, Professor Zilic. And Professor Forst and Professor Jimboski, we all very warmly congratulate you with this achievement. And as your award is shared, may I ask you to share the stage, share the two microphones, and share with us some insights into blockchain, cryptography, and I believe also some IT security. So, um, dear uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is a great honor to be here today uh, and present to you some of our work that we have done together in the last 10 years. And uh, as you can see from well, this slide, uh, our work is on cryptography, so IT security, or let's say the theory of uh, IT security. And uh, I want to start a bit with introduction of what cryptography actually is, and then also go a bit into what topics we have worked on uh, in this area, because it's very broad. There are lots of different uh, subtopics. Sub -topic so let's first start with cryptography. What is cryptography? cryptography is essentially the science of uh, securing the digital world in the presence of adversaries. And typically, what we do in cryptography, we consider two parties. They're called Alice and Bob, typically, in our world. And um, these two parties, they have to communicate with each other. They want to carry out some digital task. Uh, and then there's this evil guy, the adversary. And this adversary tries to prevent them from carrying out this task. For example, he tries to eavesdrop on the communication or do bad things. And then, of course, since we are in the digital world, these parties have also machines, computers, okay? So on which they run uh, the communication, on which they run the algorithms, and on which they also run cryptography. So th there's, uh, in particular, one important example, which was used already for centuries uh, in the past, uh, also for diplomatic uh, tasks, cryptography, encryption is very important. Uh, but only around maybe 50 years ago, uh, it started to become a science. Earlier, it was kind of an art. People tried to design it in a talk way. And only like around 50 years ago, we developed, started to develop the theory of cryptography. And uh, now, these days, essentially, cryptography is everywhere. I bet everybody of you have been using cryptography today already. If you accessed your email account or you checked in into the hotel or you were using paying with the credit card, you use cryptography every day hundreds of times. So there's a lot of applications, new applications uh, happening, but also adversaries becoming stronger and stronger. They're doing more powerful attacks. They're running, well, at, at, attacking more complex systems. And for this, we need a methodology, a theory. And this is essentially what cryptographic research is doing, developing theory and methodology for these more complex applications and also considering these much more powerful adversaries that we face in this digital world. Now, cryptographic research is done as in most scientific disciplines, of course, by people, but then these people often meet, uh, fortunately, and at least uh, a couple of years ago, it was <laughs> more often that we could meet. And uh, Stefan and me, we met at this workshop in Bertinoro in 2009, a workshop on cryptographic protocols and public key cryptography. It, it's at a very nice location, so besides doing nice uh, uh, science there, we can also have nice food, uh, uh, discuss nice things, uh, walk around in the city, and so on, and see nice uh, uh, places. Actually, it's this, this event is here on top of the hill, so you have really a nice view and very nice food because it's in Italy. So we, we started to discuss there. Uh, I mean, actually, it was one of my first uh, presentations that I gave because I was a PhD student still at this time. And uh, we were both working on similar topic. Uh, which was called leakage resilient cryptography, which I will talk to you in a moment about what this is. And after my talk, Stefan came to me and uh, he suggested, okay, let's discuss a bit more because we are working so similar topics. 
we should start to collaborate. And this was actually the, the beginning of this uh, uh, great collaboration and also uh, a very nice friendship. So uh, what is this topic that we started? It's called essentially, well, the area is called leakage resilient cryptography. And the goal of this area is to protect uh, these devices that you have seen on which the algorithms run against so-called side channel attacks. So what is a side channel attack? Essentially what an adversary can do if the algorithm runs on this computer, he can do much more evil things than just interacting with this computer. He can, for example, measure the power consumption of this computer. Okay, so he kind of measures how much power this device consumes or how much time it takes to complete the cryptographic task. And by this, he can extract information that he shouldn't usually learn, like the secret key or other secret information. And then he can break or she can break uh, 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 the device and the entire crypto collapses. And this area, leakage resilient cryptography, is essentially trying to protect against these types of attacks. So designing new algorithms, designing new countermeasures to protect against these very advanced attacks. And at this time, in 2009, this was one of the hottest topics in cryptographic research. And of course, we worked on this at that point. Still hot. It's still hot. It's still hot. It's still hot. Okay. It's still very hot. And the question that actually we started to work on with Stefan is the following, a very general uh, question where essentially we want to design a general methodology to protect any computation, like take your com computer and we want to protect it against side channel attacks. Any kind of computation should be able to, sh we should be able to protect against these very powerful attacks. And we started to look into it and it's a very beautiful question. We got super excited about it. Uh, so we worked on it more or less day or night, I remember still. I had a lot of time at that point because I was a, still a PhD student, so <laughs> I can spend enti my entire time on this. And, uh, but it turned out that this question was very difficult, so it was not always easy. We had lots of failed attempts to trying to prove some kind of general theorem. We developed like some beautiful constructions, then broke them, fixed them, broke them, fixed them, and so on. It was like cat and mouse game. But in the end, after kind of more or less two, two years of work, we came up with a construction and also a security proof. And we believed actually it's secure uh, after like this two years of work, essentially. But we submitted it to a very prestigious conference, uh, hoping that uh, we will get a nice prize, maybe like the Copernicus Award uh, for, for our work. And, but then it turned out that uh, this theorem, or that there was a bug in our work. So, uh, when we kind of like, we worked really a lot on it, it was complicated, and then we figured out uh, when we looked at it with a fresh eye that there was a bug in our proof, which was really like uh, depressing. So I wrote this email to Stefan at 10.59, uh, I yeah. think on some Friday. Stefan was actually on holiday, so I kind of ruined his holiday with my email, but he was actually still available, so we talked, I think it was uh, somewhere in the middle of the night to discuss this. And with this, I want to hand over to Stefan, who will tell you the more positive side of Well, yes, so that was kind of not a nice experience, especially because uh, we were really excited uh, uh, about this result. And uh, then it turned out that not only we had an error in the proof, but also the theorem that we were trying to prove was false. Uh, so, well, it was impossible to prove it unless mathematics is uh, inconsistent. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that was false. And, but there was an important lesson uh, from this, uh, namely, uh, this time was not wasted. Actually, I think it was a great investment, this time that we spent together, because to, first of all, we actually got two good papers out of this, maybe not as good as the one that we're trying to, to prove, but still it was uh, two good publications and publications that still get, uh, get cited. And uh, m more importantly, I think we developed very good mutual understanding and, and friendship. So we knew very well each other and we, knew what to expect from another. We were, of course, sometimes uh, getting some arguments, but this is like normal in science about you know, discussing uh, different approaches to, 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 to the project that you really care about. So that was, in retrospect, a great time, despite of not being as successful as the end, at the end in terms of what we managed to prove. Uh, and then later we continued working together on this because we already had this great understanding and 
uh, 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 we really felt like we like uh, working with each other. In the meanwhile, Sebastian, of course, graduated. He was a postdoc uh, uh, then uh, uh, in uh, EPFL in Switzerland. I moved, I was, when we met, I was actually working in Italy, but then I moved back to Poland. But we continued working. Uh, also, often, uh, like 11 p.m. was not an unusual time for us to exchange uh, uh, emails about research. Uh, so, I think what was our, one of our main achievements was uh, this new methodology for evaluating leakage. So basically, as Sebastian told you, we were working on uh, leakage-resilient cryptography, so protecting cryptographic devices from leakage. And this area was still very young then. It is still kind of young, but then it was really being born, and people were looking for mathematical models, how to model this leakage, and looking for good methodologies for evaluating leakages from chips. And that was our first uh, main big achievement. Uh, the, we uh, found a bridge between two different models that people considered in the literature. One was called noisy leakage, another one was probing leakage. I'm not going to tell you anything about the details, of course, but it's, uh, uh, I think, an important result also because it opened the door for analyzing security of many real-world applications, and people still use this result very often when they analyze security of real chips. Uh, that was the best paper award at a very good conference. Actually, joint work with, uh, with the PhD student. I believe it was not your PhD student, but he was a PhD student in a place where Sebastian was doing his, uh, his postdoc, Alexander Duke. So we got this uh, very nice uh, best paper award at Eurocrypt. Uh, and the second uh, thing that we're working on, so as Sebastian told you, leakage resilient cryptography is a very hot topic, but there is an even hotter topic <laughs> nowadays, which is, of course, blockchain. So when blockchain became popular, we got interested in this. We didn't uh, really get interested in like, financial aspects, but more in technology behind blockchain. And one of the things we did was we introduced, together with two other co-authors, we introduced uh, a concept called proof of space which is a greener way of making blockchains. So maybe you've heard the stories about blockchain and Bitcoin and miners and miners burning a lot of energy and it's very bad for the environment. So our solution is a remedy for this. And in, instead of doing lots of computation and burning electricity, proof of space that we developed are uh, based on disk space, which is much better for the environment, and actually there are real-life blockchain projects live now on the internet using these this ideas. So that was the second part, and of course we continue working together. We have uh, uh, several other uh, things that we are doing. Uh, even today <laughs> we, we are trying to unsuccessfully provide <laughs> some CRM. Maybe it will go, it will take less than two years uh, this time. Uh, so uh, with this, I think it's time uh, to, to conclude. I would like to thank a lot both foundations, uh, uh, the German uh, Research Foundation and the Foundation for Polish Science. Uh, we would, of course, like to thank the jury. Uh, we would like to thank uh, Professor Yuval Ishai and Moti Jung, who wrote the recommendation letters uh, for us. Uh, we would also like to thank our collaborators, especially young collaborators, some of uh, uh, whom are here uh, uh, with us today. And, uh, of course, uh, would like to take, thank our families. I would like to thank my parents, uh, my brother and his family, and of course my wife, uh, uh, Carolina, for their uh, uh, support. And uh, I would, of course, like to thank a lot Sebastian for all these years that we spent uh, together on great research. And of course, I would also like to uh, uh, congratulate the other winners for winning their Copernicus Award in 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Faust. Thank you very much, Professor Jimbowski. And I'm very sorry, ladies and gentlemen, to inform you that we have no more awards to present this evening. So we may put away this microphone. However, uh, there is, will be another chance in two years to present another award to a fantastic pair of researchers, one German and one Polish. That will certainly come 
later, but could I perhaps now ask Professor Zelic in his capacity of the president of the Foundation for Polish Science to wrap up today's ceremony. So, first of all, I would like to congratulate once again both pairs of uh, scientists. This was fantastic. We learn a lot now, and, uh, and actually, we actually saw how, in different, completely different area, you you are achieving uh, success. Which definition of the success is different everywhere, and especially we can see here uh, in these two examples. Uh, and uh, I would like to also thank you for coming. And, uh, and uh, this is a real pleasure to host you here. And I know that uh, all of you are extremely busy and uh, it was uh, sometimes even painful to come here. I, I, I know uh, uh, Professor Baker, she was uh, uh, in Panama, Mexico, and now she came here. So we really, really appreciate this. Thank you. Please stay with us. Please stay with us. Yeah. Please stay with us and can we ask Professor Becker to join us for an extended photo family family photo? Because we haven't got a photo with all of you, lady and gentlemen. So how about perhaps moving this a bit away so that we have more space and that our photographers can take a shot of all of you. This is your opportunity also to collect your flowers <laughs> if you left them behind. And after we've cleaned this space a bit, we'll have a great, really, really extended family photo with everyone here. I believe there may be names on the diplomas. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where the ceremony of presenting the Copernicus Awards for the years 2020 and 2022 really ends. Thank you. Whether gathered here in this beautiful hall or watching us remotely on YouTube channel of the Foundation for Polish Science, Thank you for being with us and thank you for partaking in the success of the four eminent researchers and the whole Copernicus Award program that supports such people. Thank you once again for being with us and I hope to see you again in 2024 for the Jubilee edition of the Copernicus Award. It will be presented for the 10th time. Thank you very much. <laughs>